So we are in Milan Expo 2015. The theme is Feeding the Planet Energy for Life. Uh, and that invites us to ponder and meditate on how will we eat in the future. Do you think this theme is important for our future? Do you think it's the right theme to be chosen? I think it's extremely important. We have been speaking about nutrition. How are we going to uh, have enough food for the world population, which is coming to 9 billion in the future? So, and how to do that in a secure way, in a safe way? And I think exactly there, that's why my company is there, because that's what we're all about. Our passion is about nutrition and how we link it up with uh, feeding the world. Uh, we are in the Swiss Pavilion, and here there is a very smart way to make people meditate on uh, responsible consumption. And we actually see that people, the consumers today, they're not very keen to, con to consume responsibly. Um, what do you think we have to expect in the future for consumers? Will they be more aware and conscious, uh, re responsible or not? Well, the resources are limited. We know that. And we have to care for them. If we want to secure that the next generations are having the same chances we have. So we have to be responsible. And we have to be responsible uh, as company, but also as an individual. And that is what the pavilion is about. It is to induce this feeling about, yes, we can claim the others doing their part, but I can do my part. And it is a small part, but there's many, many people that make small parts make a big impact. And I think that's the whole feeling that we want to transmit through these towers and through this inducing this feeling about limited resources. Let's all care for it. Uh, you have a special position to tell us what will we eat in 2050, in the future? Oh, but you see, eating has to be pleasurable too. So we're going to eat many parts, same things we have today, bread. We're going to drink water, just like today. So we're going to have a better understanding, though of how these elements link up with health. And I think that is what we want to do too, educating. Because education on nutrition, how to feed, how to have a healthy lifestyle in my eyes is very important and that's how one of our commitments as a company. And that's why we have this uh, feeding the mind in this where, where we're standing here. It's all about linking up with the consumer, linking up with the people and make us understand better how nutrition is part of our life in a meaningful way and how we can decide and be a, I would say, an active actor of our own health. Uh, here in the Swiss Pavilion, Nestlé filled one tower with lyophilized coffee, and not many people know that actually it's an invention made by Nestlé to preserve, co uh, pr to preserve coffee when they have abundant crops. Actually, it was the Brazilian uh, state to, to ask you. Uh, can we expect new innovations in the next future in the food sector? Well, we have so many. You mentioned that coffee was uh, now more than 75 years ago. Uh, Nescafe, uh, instant coffee was invented by Nestle because the government of Brazil had an issue of overproduction. What do we do? And, and there it came. So, but innovation comes from different angles. And that was a need specifically, but we have so many other innovations. Also, speaking about coffee, we have Nespresso. And, uh, but also in food, the first product Nestle had almost 150 years ago was 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 our uh, Cerelac, uh, our infant uh, uh, cereal, uh, combining cereal and milk. So, and there are so many smaller uh, innovations and bigger ones. And, and that is what makes this dynamic of a company, but also as a society. And I think that's what's so passionate about uh, our industry and about nutrition in general. Uh, many pavilions here show that one third of the food that is produced is actually wasted. Uh, what can larger Com large companies like uh, Nestlé can do on an international level to solve this problem? There's many, many factors, uh, but give and take, one third of what is produced uh, in, on, the, on the farm is lost somewhere. In the developing world, it is lost because it cannot get to the market, it cannot get to the consumer because there's no infrastructures. And in our, I would say, affluent society here in the Western world, we throw it away in the kitchen uh, because we have an oven. And that's a pity. Now, what can we do? Well, first of all, be part of the discussion around it. Uh, linking up with farmers like we do in Nestle, 700,000 farmers we linked up with. If you see, for example, that we can reduce in the normal process 15% losses on the field, we can bring it down to 1%. That's already something. In our factory, reducing waste and bringing it down dramatically, uh, and that is what we do too. Then linking up with the retailers and doing a better job and linking up the supply chain. Then also talking and having portion uh, control in the sense that people don't have to throw away. We portion it in the right way so that people eat what they open up. 
um, packaging waste out and, and you go on. So we can do a lot individually as a company, educational with our consumers, linking up with our partners upstream and downstream. And I think that's a, one of the biggest issues and the biggest opportunities. Is there enough food? Yes, there is enough food. Just don't waste it. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure.